<laughs> so, what he did. so I called him and got his voicemail. So I left the voicemail. Hey, how are we doing on the accounts? And he called me back, voicemail, touche. And he said, uh, and don't try to figure out who it is, okay? But, um, but this guy's, you know, he's just like, uh, Ty, I got your voicemail. And his voice does kind of sound like this. And uh, he said, <laughs> he said, the market is uh, down 40.1%, but I got some good news for you. Your accounts are only down 39.9%. <laughs> He's an optimist. All right. So what's your difficulty? Financial, uh, your 401k, need a job, all right? Don't like your job. Um, how's your marriage? Is your, is your marriage, uh, would that be in the difficulty category? And you know, for some people, it's like publicly, you know, the perception may be, man, their marriage is just great, all right? But if it, but you, you realize that, you know, if people really found out the state of your marriage, you'd, you'd be embarrassed. Your communication level is lacking in your marriage. You have unresolved, uh, unresolved issues continuing in your marriage. Some people have difficulties of health, sickness, and disease. Some people, their relationships, they have relationships that haven't been mended. They're difficult. There's misunderstandings. All right? Some of you may feel like you don't have any meaningful kindred spirit relationships right now. And that's painful. Some of you have regrets that you're living with all the time regarding past decisions. And you just can't shake those regretful decisions. This is what I struggle with, uh, less and less, but still. Uh, some of you have fear, all right? Fear of the future, fear of rejection. It's like that neighborhood dog biting the heels of the mailman. It's just like fear's nipping at, the, nipping at your spiritual heels all the time. And some of you have the difficulty of purposelessness. purposelessness. You're living without purpose. Um, you're living life without an eternal purpose. You, just, you, you kind of feel, nothing against factory workers, but you're just kind of clocking in and clocking out on life. All right? Same thing year after year. And when you passed from 08 to 09, it was like kind of a spiritual yawn. It's like, well, this better ramp up for another year. All right? Living life without purpose. And so if you were to write Paul, if you were to write Paul regarding your difficulties, what would you write? All right? Your mentor, your father in the faith, your kindred spirit. What would you write to Paul about what's going on in your life right now? And, and you know what? I am like Mr. In, in the, without the Lord, I'm, I'm undisciplined. I'm, I'm, I'm hyperactive. Well, with the Lord, I'm hyperactive. Okay? All right? Where'd you guys come from? Um, I, uh, it's hard for me to sit down for long periods of time. But one of the most life-giving things I've done the last number of years is to journal. And I would just double dog, I would dare, I would dare and double dog dare everyone here. Won't apply to everybody, but you, you've got to find a way to process your heart. And uh, so if you're a journalist, get, get your journal out and write a letter, all right, write it to the Lord, Paul's gone, and, and, and share your difficulties with the Lord, all right? The, the things that you're challenging, challenged with. And so... So Timothy wrote the letter to Paul, and this second Timothy is the letter Paul wrote back to Timothy. And here we are. Now, we're going to do chapter 4 of 2 Timothy, verses 1 through 8. I'm re reading in the NIV. Let me read that, and then we will uh, look at these verses. Paul wrote this, In the presence of God and of, G of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing, appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge, verse 2, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, Timothy, keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. 
Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but to also, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Let me pray and then we'll uh, launch. Father, thank you, Lord, for this precious group of uh, individuals. And Lord, we pray that this be a morning of revelation that would lead to transformation in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, verse 1. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, now, Paul knowing that his death was soon, I mean, that, in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, I mean, when, when I'm assuming when someone knows they're going to die, eternity is pressing in on their hearts and their minds and their thoughts. Who will judge the living and the dead. And in, view, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Now, how often, question, how often do you think about life after death? Young people, all right, just getting facial hair like me. Young people especially, how often do you think about life after death? Kelly probably thought she was going to live to be 70. The Central High cheerleader, whose funeral I did. See, the lie of the enemy to teenagers is you got decades. And that may be true. And one of my heroes, Billy Graham, who he said, he, when he preached, he would say this. He'd say, God, there's, of all the promises in the Bible, there's not one promise of a tomorrow. And that's true. So how often do you think about life after death? How often do you think about your life after death? 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says this, The God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they may not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is, who is the image of God. You see, the devil, the God of this world, is the God of the now, not future, and not eternity. I mean, when the devil approached Adam and Eve in the garden, notice that he didn't say beyond when you eat the fruit, you'll be like God knowing good and evil. Notice he didn't add to that and said, oh, and by the way, there'll be disease, cancer and leukemia, and there'll be sickness, there'll be famine, there'll be divorce, there'll be rejection, there'll be fatherlessness, there'll be, you know, storms and earthquakes. I mean, you know, of course not. Because the devil is the, is the small G-O-D of the now. The devil gets us to think only about the now. And that's why Paul waved the flag of caution when he said, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he'll reap. Choices have consequences. And so the, the, the God of this world wants us just to think of the now. And not the consequences of our choices that may not be consequences for years. And yes, Jesus can and wants to and will forgive every sin that we ask him to forgive us for. But sometimes, if he doesn't bring mercy, there's consequences. And we got to say that. Because you know, Timothy in his life, he was living in the reality of, of persecution and martyrdom. God had his attention. Paul, in his last days in that prison cell, lived it. He was feeling it. It was reality to him. So the devil is the, the, devil is the God of the now. No future, no eternity. You see, the devil knows if you think about eternity, you'll be motivated in the now. The Lord is the Lord of the now, the future, and eternity. You know what I love about Jesus is you can settle the last issue first and live from there. Like if I were to die today, ooh, you know, I'd want my family to cry a little bit. Maybe wail some, okay? All right? All right? But hey, I've settled, I've settled the death issue. It's settled. Is it for you? I think so. If you say I think so, it's not. I hope so. If you say I hope so, it's not. Am I supposed to teach or preach? Hi, baby mama. All right. You know they got like a short circuit TV or closed circuit TV um, down the hallway, about a thousand miles.